Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be playing with ephemera pieces on my page and using some collage tissues as our foundation. So I'm starting in my large dilutions journal and just gluing down a large piece of collage tissue. Now this one's from Natalie May, who's from Australian Company. Um, put the links in the description box. She has got lots and lots of pictures of these beautiful faces, which I really, really love. And you can use them in so many ways, but I'm really loving keeping sort of the central image as much as possible and then adding detail around the outside. So one of the things that I was doing is um, just making sure that it's all um, glued down um, onto the page really securely. Um, so that I can make sure that I can add other mediums and so on on top. Because there is a little bit of printing around the outside and this didn't fit quite on the page, I've decided to extend that out by doing some of my own stamping into the background. So just using um, some text, some dots and now these leaves just to tie in with the rest of the image. So down the bottom she's sort of got these leafy flowery bits and pieces um, so I put those in. So at the beginning you sort of saw me playing around with um, a wax that I put over her face and over some of her hair. So that is um, the Tim Holtz cells. It mine is an old one from Judy Kins. It's basically a sealant wax. It um, seals the paper so nothing can absorb into it. So I know Tim Holtz has done bits and pieces with it with his um, oxide sprays and so on that you can press over the top but you can sort of see where some of these magicals could have gone onto her face well they have done it hasn't spread as much as it could have if I didn't have those um, that wax on the um, face to protect it sorry I can't get my words out now if you didn't have that wax obviously you could use gel medium over the top too that will work but Obviously, while I'm still trying to do that, I'm trying to avoid those areas. Where this um, powdered watercolour has landed, I've tried to deal with it as quickly as possible because it is quite pigmented and staining. So if you can get it in as fast as possible with a little bit of water to sort of wipe it away as much as possible, um, really, really handy. I then I'm going in with a little bit of apricot paint just to take away the bluish tone that I did give to her skin and um, cover it up a little bit and make it a little bit more um, realistic than having those big blue spots in the middle. So if you do make a mistake, it's okay. You can always cover it up with something else. Now I'm going in with the Distress Crayon. Oh, these are the watercolour crayons. Just to add some detail back in again. Now you can use any colour pencils or watercolour crayons, um, scribble sticks, neon colours, whatever you've got um, used, you could do it with paint, it's, it's completely up to you. I just had these sitting next to me and I've been having fun using them so that's what I'm going in with. I have found that they work pretty well. You uh, Sometimes you will find on some textures it, you need to scrub a little bit harder to get them in, um, but uh, it does give you that lovely line work. And because I can sharpen up the pencils too, I really like it, so um, it works out well. I'm just going around and playing with my different shading, putting in my Stabilo Oil Pencil to bring in some darkness to the face again, adding in some detail to the hair and extending that down, and also trying to find a white pen that works so I can put in the whites of her eyes again. I always find that even with collage tissues like this, where they um, have the whites of the eyes in, if you put some white paint or the Posca paint pens over the top, it really does sort of help bring it all to life again. So once I'd done, sort of fiddled around with my middle focal image, I wanted to add some ephemera pieces. So I had all these Tim Holtz bits and pieces. You can see my bag of goodies there. So these are a whole mix of die cuts and um, transparent like wings and so on and the butterflies that I had floating around for a little while some words and so on and I'm just 
basically auditioning different pieces to see what I liked, what I didn't like. Now one of the things that I do find with these die cut pieces, which does drive me slightly potty, is the fact that they're not necessarily cut, um, fussy cut up to the edge, which I know is nearly impossible to do with these things. That's just my little pet peeve. So sometimes if I'm feeling in the move, mood, I will actually re-fussy cut them so I can get rid of those edges. Now I'm going in with some transparencies, which is why that's shining so much, and um, overlaying the butterflies on there. So I wanted to make like a floral headband for her and then have some butterflies sitting on them. So I'm just going in with normal glue to glue them down. Um, this, while it's in a different bottle, is the Art Institute Glitter Glue. It's not actually glittery, it's to glue glitter down, but I find it really tacky, it dries quickly and it works really, really well. Once I've done that, I decided I wanted to add some colour into the background, but it wasn't quite vibrant enough for me. So I decided to go in with my fluid um, acrylic paints, so um, I get this really bright burst of magenta onto the page, and you can sort of see the difference that made as opposed to the watercolour. Because it was so bright, however, I did want to just tone it down slightly so I did a bit of a wipe away with my um, stencil just to give a little bit of texture in the background and also to see some of that printing and stamping that I put in the background. I also want to add a few um, metallic highlights so I'm using my Gilt Gloss Spray to pop those in. If you had a metallic paint pen you could use the same. Um, again it's not necessary but I just like that sort of metallic -y um, effect when you sort of tip your page to sort of see where the sparkle will come. I was getting a little carried away with butterflies. I kept finding some going, oh, I'll try that one, oh, I'll try that one. So she's ended up with quite a few on the page as well. When I was finished, I then decided I was going to put a quote on my page after I'd finished playing around with the butterflies. You can never have too many butterflies. Um, and there were the big Tim Holtz um, flashcards, but I just couldn't find one that I wanted. It was just a bit too big and chunky to pop on the page. So I decided I would go and handwrite a quote on it. So currently I am probably going through my phone to find a quote to write on my page. And now I'm going to find a pen that works because <laughs> these things take time. And um, I've talked about this before, but one of the reasons I really like using Pinterest is because of the way the quotes are presented. So um, this is how I sort of increase my um, writing of fonts or um, practicing my fonts. So having that visual little reminder next to me to show me how to do the cursive and so on gives me a bit of an idea. You'll also see with this, it's quite a large quote and I'm writing over my image. Now, I don't mind that because for me in most of my pages, it's actually the quote. While I have fun doing the background and the page and so on, it's actually usually the quote that um, is the bit that sort of pulls it all together for me. So I find that that is the most important part Point for me. So if it's written over her hair or over her body it really doesn't matter because it helps blend everything on the page together. Now certainly if you didn't want to do that you could paint the opposite page and write it on there or you could sort of write it around the outside of the image so it really is up to you but don't be scared to write across your image. You will still be able to see it peeking through and it will still read fine. Once I've finished putting my um, lettering on, I'm going back and putting a shadow on my letters just to help pop it out from the background. You will notice on the areas where I have used the watercolour dyes or the powdered watercolours that the white is turning the colour of the watercolours underneath. Now that's because it's a water reactive product so by putting the wet paint pen over the top is going to activate that. Again, I don't really mind, it doesn't really bother me. If it bothered you, I would write with a paint pen 
let it dry completely and then go over the top of it again. So once you've put the first layer of acrylic down, it will kind of seal the page so you can put a second layer down over the top. This is a close up, you can see that shading I've done with pencil, you can see those ephemera pieces I have added to the page. Um, on the butterflies you can see those transparencies have glued down with that white glue and they're absolutely clear so um, don't be afraid of transparencies. You can glue them down and you won't see what's going through them. And this is a close up of the whole page. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you start using some of your different ephemera stashes in your journals. Um, it just opens up a whole new range of stuff that you can use when you start going through your stash. Until next time, bye for now.